Greetings. Hi, I'm Christine, and I'm excited to share with you a really cool workshop on mushrooms today. We are going to be focusing on a widespread species that's found throughout the northern hemispheres of the world, including right here where I live in central Oregon. It's called the fly agaric or Amanita muscaria. And it's a toxic and flamboyant species that I'm sure you've seen in a lot of fairy tales or maybe even in real life. So in the first half of this workshop, I'm going to be teaching you some of their characteristics. We'll be going over general mushroom anatomy, so you'll be able to draw it more accurately. And I'll be talking about my six steps to sketching success. In the second half of the workshop, we'll actually be drawing these uh, individual mushrooms that we see here. I'll be leading you in a step-by-step -step drawing demonstration, and it'll be super fun, and I can't wait to get started. So to get the most out of today's workshop, I encourage you to download your supplies, which includes a two-page handout of images of the fly agaric or Amanita muscaria. There's also a handout on the parts of the mushroom that I've created for you. And you'll probably want some extra paper and some sketching pencils perhaps some colored pencils as well, if you want to add some of the red cap and green vegetation. So today's species we're drawing is the Amanita muscaria. And I've chosen it because it really does have a worldwide distribution, especially this genus. Um, most of them are poisonous. Some of them are actually deadly. Um, and a few of them are edible under the white right conditions. Um, not this species, but a related species in this genus. And but anyway, um, that's one reason we're choosing this Amanita mushroom to draw today because it's um, worldwide in this genus and this species is all um, in the northern hemispheres of the world. So it's really common. So here you can see the kind of the white uh, warts on top. And those are actually remnants from the bulb that it, it sprouted out of called the universal veil. And that universal veil is shown here in this little skirt that we talked about. And let's see what else. So here's another uh, view of three of them that are at different stages of, of, um, of opening. So when it first opens, it just looks like an egg. And then it's kind of sprouts out of that or hatches out of that egg in a way and looks like this uh, smallest one. And then it gets bigger and bigger. And that's when it, the it's open enough to have the gills be mature and to uh, put the spores out into the forest. And here we have the uh, annulus or that ring again as well. And this one's kind of flat in this picture. And, and here's another uh, picture showing one that is uh, just opening. So it's just broken open from this universal veil that it kind of hatched from. <laughs> and then here's a side view, kind of like the one we'll draw, where you can see that um, egg-like structure it hatched out of. And you can see some of the white um, kind of roots or mycelium and the stipe or stalk and that annulus and then all of those nice gills. Now, mushrooms don't live very long. Um, and so that's another thing about picking edible mushrooms is there's a very short window when any particular mushroom is edible because once it is uh, released the spores, it's going to rot very quickly and it's going to get... Um, it's going to get infested with all kinds of maggots and different insects that are going to decompose it. And, um, and so it's a food source for lots of insects in the forest. But if you get it too late, then it's going to be full of um, things and you can't eat it. Anyway, again, we can't eat this species. <laughs> See how they're really young? They're just really round, um, like an egg. And then they, um, this is where it's still opening. And this is when they're getting older and the cap gets flattened and the whole color gets more dull. Most mushrooms you know about are the ones that have gills. And so that's a big group of very common mushrooms that you're going to see in the forest and meadows and wherever you go. So we're going to talk a little bit about the parts of the mushroom because, again, we're going to draw them. And um, if you are new here, that's what we do is we spend a bit of time talking about the parts because that's going to help you to draw it much better. You're going to know the parts to look for 
while you're drawing and going to understand when you see another one to draw, uh, either in the forest or one you've purchased at the grocery store or you have seen at a fungus fair, you'll know the parts to look for. Um, okay. And so these are just the various different parts of a basic mushroom. Uh, you probably know that you know, mushrooms have this big cap and on different types of mushrooms, they may have different kinds of scales on them or bumps, or they might have these striations. Um, and um, of course, underneath, well, on the top there, they're going to be different colors and that's going to help you identify them as well. Um, and the colors will change uh, as the mushroom ages and the shape of that cap will change too as it ages. So these are all things to help you identify them. And then um, underneath the cap are these gills. And those um, are named after like the gills of a fish. And they radiate out from the center. And inside there are where there's the millions and millions of spores. Um, and then some uh, fungi instead have these little things that look like teeth or pores. So that's another really important thing to notice when you're going to draw and identify a mushroom. It's important to know how to identify mushrooms, partly because like if you have a dog and you're out in the forest and um, dogs are often attracted to the um, kind of uh, stinky smell of some mushrooms, they're attracted like the fishy odor, they might eat a mushroom and um, you might not know if it's poisonous or not. And you should probably try to pick it and bring it to your veterinarian if your poor dog starts throwing up because there are definitely some mushrooms that will give them gastrointestinal upset just like you would have and some that could even kill them. So that's one of the useful reasons to know about mushrooms um, besides just knowing how to identify them and sketch them is to know if they're uh, edible or poisonous to you or to others. And so Three kind of major groups of mushrooms are mushrooms that have uh, gills and mushrooms that have little pores that look like kind of like a, um, a dish sponge underneath. And then some of them have little teeth. Uh, so those are cool to look at. Oh, Maggie says hen of the woods is a mushroom. It sure is. Yeah. So then there's the main um, stalk that they also call the stipe. And that can be a lot of different shapes and colors. It can be um, also smooth or it can be kind of bumpy and striated. And if you cut it in half, it could either be solid or there could be like a hollow tube in the middle. Now, only some uh, mushrooms have this thing called a ring or a skirt. And that's something that um, all the Amanita mushrooms have that helps you identify it as one of the possibly uh, poisonous mushrooms. Although some of those are edible. And then uh, at the very bottom here is this part called the vulva, and it's um, on the enlarged part. And um, not all mushrooms have that, but this is something also that the Amanita mushrooms have that we'll be drawing. And then at the very bottom, there's the kind of the roots that they don't call roots. They call those the, the mycelium. Moving on. Now, we're not going to go too much into this. This isn't really a biology lesson, but... Um, uh, when you think of a mushroom that you can see poking up out of the ground, that's only part of the, the, the organism. It's kind of like how an apple is only the part of the fruit that's part of the whole tree. So the mushroom that you can see in the forest, that's kind of like an apple. That's just the reproductive structure. Um, so it's like the flower and the fruit, like an apple. And so the rest of the whole body of the organism is underground, is those mycelia, okay? So anyway, they release the spores uh, and uh, um, uh, so eventually those spores uh, germinate and then they come up. And that life cycle can be super quick, like especially in the spring when you go out to look for mushrooms. Um, you can go out into a forest one day and literally the next day there can be a bunch of mushrooms uh, popping up out of the ground. Speaking of, of spores, one of the um, important ways to identify mushrooms is actually the color of the spores. And in my resources page, 
where you can find below where it says click here for resources. I have a link to um, my other blog post about mushrooms and you can also learn there how to make a mushroom spore print. And you can see this, um, this poster that I made once. So it just shows you how to make what's called a mushroom spore print. And that's actually a really fun activity to do with kids too, because um, mushroom spores are, all different colors from white to black. And so um, when you're making a mushroom spore print, that's why you set the cap of a mushroom down on um, a half black and half white piece of paper so that you can see which one they are. And they can be very pretty. Um, this is one I made here, this uh, image uh, with white spores. So I've got six steps that are really gonna help you to draw your mushrooms more quickly, more confidently, and more accurately. And you can use these steps to apply to anything in the world you want to draw. So the first thing I like to do is to block in my basic shapes. So imagine those circles and ovals, the rectangles, the squares and triangles. And while you're doing that, you wanna think of the overall relative proportions of each of those things. So like what is the proportional size of the cap compared to the stem and those sorts of things. So next it comes angles and you can see there are a lot of uh, 90 degree angles in this image um, and noticing what things are aligned to other things. So the parallel uh, stipes or stems. Another thing you can notice are negative shapes and those are the white shapes you see that are between each mushroom. So you've got some sort of triangular and rectangular shapes. And lastly, notice the flow lines or imagining how your pencil might flow over those shapes in a, a gentle curve. So now that you've learned a little bit about the biology and anatomy of our Amanita mushroom, we're going to get started sketching it. So I'm going to be using this handout and a basic pencil. And we're gonna go very slowly, step by step. So even if you've never drawn before, don't worry, you can follow along. Okay, so let's get started. So again, I'm just kind of pointing out all the parts, just looking at them. And we've already done that a bunch already, so I won't stop here too long, because we've already talked about all those parts. But I want you to do that in general as well, just kind of tracing over um, air tracing. And then you'll start to block in where the whole drawing is. And that's why I have a box here that's going to help show um, all the edges. So now I'm just doing a very, very light circles of where the caps are going to be. Uh, again, if you're new, I start very light and I work a little bit everywhere. Um, and then I get more details. And that's partly because um, if I'm out sketching in the field, I never know how long an organism is going to be in front of me. Or even if it's a mushroom, I don't know if it's going to start pouring rain on me <laughs> or if I'm going to get cold or wet or tired. So I, I sketch a little bit everywhere and slowly add details as I can. Okay. So now that I just very lightly placed where the four uh, mushrooms are going to be, I'm going to start drawing the one in front and then I'm going to go to the, to the left. So we're going to go from right to left. So now we're just going to do this first mushroom on the right, and then we're going to go to our left eventually. So I'm measuring the uh, shape of that first mushroom cap. So we're drawing the red part of the cap first. Again, just super lightly. I'm using my, my uh, pencil as a measuring tool. As you see, I do that a lot. Yep, I do that a lot. So I had gotten a little bit too big there. So that's why it's important to be, say so light and loose. And if this paper weren't taped down for the video, I would probably be moving it a bit to be more ergonomic with drawing. 
So like doing a, a, the arch of uh, the cap is easier to do if I have the paper turned like this, because that's how my hand works better. So now we're doing the stock or the stipe, and again, just measuring the width and the length of it, and also the uh, shape of that um, annulus um, or that veil that is a characteristic of this genus, the Amanitas. <laughs> yeah, Anne says you don't even know your daughter's phone number now. That's funny. So I want you to stay really light. I don't want you to be pushing down on the pencil at all. I want you to try to draw as lightly as you can, even lighter than I have here, uh, because I'm drawing a little darker so that you can see it. And so now you saw I got a little bit of that first mushroom all um, sketched in, just the very lightest outline, and I'm gonna just clean it up a bit. So just cleaning up. So you can see how I separated the editing from the creation phase. Just double checking now. And now um, just looking at where those uh, white spots are. And you can be just really loose with this. You do not have to do it perfect because every mushroom is going to be really different. It's not like having to put two eyes on an animal. So you can just be really um, uh, loose with this and put as many as you want. Uh, but you will notice, though, that in terms of the rules of perspective, that the ones that are closer to you, um, the ones that are um, in the center here, those are larger um, and then the ones uh, on the sides are on the top. And that's just kind of a rule of perspective that you can notice. Okay. So, oh, so actually, sorry. So I just went to continue on with the outline first. I was outlining those bumpy parts on the top and I'll add the individual um, scales, white scales later. All right, so now, now I'm gonna add those little white scales. And again, you can do it however you want. Okay, Frida, bye-bye, come back. All right, so you see, I just did that super light. And um, now we're gonna do the next mushroom. You can see how those spots look smaller on the mature mushroom. And again, I'm just measuring the width and the depth of that cap first. So you see, I do a lot of measurements, just really being careful. And you see, now I'm gonna do some angles. So I'm gonna show what's lining up with what kind of, I'm just showing where the cap of that um, second mushroom goes compared to the first. And right there, I'm drawing this area, this see this really small negative shape here. So again, that's one reason I use these mushrooms because they have a lot of interesting negative shapes that you can practice drawing. And again, there's no perfect way to do this. I am trying to be as accurate as I can. But since mushrooms are so variable, um, you could make yours look a lot different and, and it would still be uh, anatomically accurate. And so that's why learning so much about the anatomy really helps. So now I'm going to line up the stalk and where it goes behind that first mushroom. And looking at that alignment and also where it stops compared to the first mushroom. Now you see, I, I hadn't, I'm, now I'm double checking that negative shape and I didn't get it quite right, did I? That's a very narrow negative shape in there. So I'm gonna fix that now. So that's how looking at negative shapes really helps. I'm adding in the, the back side of the gills there. And that's going to help get that negative shape better. 
but then the front of that red cap, I'm making a little larger too. Good, I see a lot of you are totally still here. And now I'm, uh, yeah, I was just lightening up that cap because I realized that I'm gonna wanna make it sort of bumpy with the white um, bumps on top. <laughs> And I usually use my um, right or my left finger to kind of point to keep track of where I'm at and to try to remind me and remind you to keep looking, keep doing what we call ground truthing is a term that field biologists use to really look at their subjects. Now, one thing you notice, you see how um, this line of the, the stalk doesn't kind of quite line up with this bottom one here. See how it looks much wider and that looks kind of weird, but what, why that's wider is because we're looking at that, um, we're looking at that skirt part, that veil. So the top part um, is larger, just like right here, the top part is going to be wider than the, the bottom part. And that's why this line doesn't quite um, match. It looks a little odd, but that's the biology behind it. And we can also notice where the bottom of the second mushroom stalk ends compared to the first one. Now I'm doing a little bumpy area there for the top of that mushroom. It's not as bumpy as the smaller, younger one because those, those, um, those white scales get kind of stretched out and flattened. Rebecca says they look like a cow. <laughs> oh, Charlotte Sears, bye. So I'm just uh, drawing in those guys really uh, quickly, just those little white spots and, and noticing that they are smar smaller and farther apart than the first mushroom. But other than that, they don't have to be exact. So that's why I'm just keeping it really light and loose. Andre Nam, Andre, thank you. You're welcome. And, and I think I still have that a bit too narrow, but that's okay. See, um, this, uh, this uh, cap could have been a little fatter because um, not many of the um, gills are showing in the real one. But again, if you understand the biology of something and understand the, um, the general variation that could be accepted in the world of these species, then you know if it's okay to not draw it just like you see if it's still biologically accurate. So now we're doing the third mushroom. It's behind the second and I'm just showing where exactly it is in comparison, just making little tick marks. Maureen says, yes, thank you. So now we're just doing the width and the depth of that third cap. Courtney says, yes, Maureen, yeah, thank you very much. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad that makes sense. Sometimes I'm not quite sure <laughs> of these ideas I have. Lots of yeses, good, thank you so much. Amelia, Rebecca K, Elizabeth K, Anya, is, am I saying your name right, Anya? or Anaya. <laughs> okay, so you see how I just keep double checking and um, you know, really this double checking is what's gonna keep you from um, drawing way too large and getting your picture off the page like will happen if you don't do these measurements right away. Now the length of that third stalk and its width. And this one's pretty young. It's the youngest of the four. So you don't really see much of the gills. It's, it's pretty much still kind of closed. Like if you think of a mushroom that you buy in the store, they always recommend you buy the younger ones where there's still that veil over the gills and you don't notice it. So that's a younger one. So that's your homework assignment. Next time you go to the grocery store and look at mushrooms, um, notice the, the age of those button mushrooms and whether you can see the gills or whether they're covered or not by that veil. Okay, so now we're just lightly adding those white scales on top of the red cap. 
and there's really no rules here, just kind of noticing that where they are in general. Okay, our very last mushroom. You guys are hanging in there with me, looking at the nice negative shape and the tick marks for where the cap is going to be in comparison to the third. Area and Arlo ask, why does the middle mushroom have more spots? Um, I think it's kind of because um, just like that first mushroom has more spots, it just looks like it relatively because the cap is still young and round. It hasn't gotten larger and expanded. So it's not necessarily that it has more. You just, um, it just kind of looks like it because it's rounded and flattened. I mean, rounded. Okay, so we're doing that. That's oval of that fourth mushroom. So that's not a perfect circle because since it's laying sort of on its side, it's sort of a three quarter view. It's kind of a flattened circle, um, more of an oval. So we're not gonna draw a perfect circle. Uh, so it's a little bit flattened. And now I'm gonna make the line of the red um, cap that you see. And the bumpy line for the top of the cap. Rebecca says the last one looks so cool. Yeah. So this is why I chose these four mushrooms um, to also, you know, really show you the anatomy of them from different angles and also um, how they look at different ages. And also because there's so many cool negative shapes like that negative shape I'm noticing um, right there. This negative shape. Wait, wait. This negative shape right here um, is going to help me to draw this okay so i'm i'm constantly looking back and forth with my eyes from my photograph to my sketch my photograph to my sketch you're never going to have your eyes on your sketch for more than a few seconds otherwise you're drawing from memory or imagination which is a different kind of exercise drawing that round um kind of egg shape that the whole mushroom sort of uh, hatched out of as it were now the stalk. And the uh, the veil there or skirt. And you can see how it's kind of flattened now that it's older, it's kind of uh, wilted. So it's closer to the cap or the stalk, I'm sorry, than that first youngest one that has this um, skirt going straight out. <clears throat> so here really uh, just kind of emphasizing where that edge is and <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, dirt attached there. So it's just really bumpy, not perfect at all. Uh, but we do see that negative shape there between the third and the fourth mushroom. And double checking those shapes. And now just gonna um, push a little harder with my pencil and get those edges right. Now I'm gonna start to draw those gills. Let me pause it. So the gills are radiating out, wait, sorry. The gills are radiating out from the center of the stalk, kind of like spokes of a wheel. And you can kind of see them better um, when they're going straight at you. You can see deeper into them, like right here. See how there's more of this kind of um, honey colored shadow in there. You can really see them. Whereas the ones that you're seeing from the side here aren't as obvious. They kind of like closer together and thinner lines. Now, I don't do a very good job here, but I'm just sort of showing where it's going to be in general.
<laughs> Elizabeth K says, this one is a lot easier than the animals we have done. <laughs> yeah, well, ease is kind of relative. But yeah, animals, especially pretty animals, can be very intimidating, like that really cute pika. It's really hard to get animal faces to look realistic and, and pretty. Um, but yeah, it, sometimes it's a good assignment to draw something that you think is ugly. That's another assignment I give to my students in my courses is to find something that's really ugly and draw it. And that will help you to not be intimidated by how pretty it is. <laughs> now the side view, you hardly see those, uh, the dots of the cap. So I've done those the, the lightest. Um, so now I'm just gonna look over the whole thing. I've gotten it all penciled in and I'm just gonna go darker. Now, this is the step where if you wanted to switch over to a permanent ink pen, you know, or you're just going to make a nice outline to uh, transfer it onto watercolor paper, uh, like we did with our Heliconia Blossom. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're just uh, strengthening those lines. Um, yeah, Rebecca said the pike, it was so cute. <laughs> but I'm not going to just trace. I'm not just looking at my drawing right now. I'm making sure, like I'm showing you with my pencil going up and down, making sure that I'm double checking and looking some more at those details, like how I had forgotten to add those gills right there. And I'm adding a little bit of the, you know, kind of the personality in terms of the, the structure of the, um, those dots and we're going to add some of the leaves and the soil on the, the, the bases of the stalks. And I'm strengthening the um, kind of the front or bottom half of each of my little white spots just to give them a little depth because there is a tiny, tiny bit of a cast shadow on some of those, especially the bigger ones. Those one kind of just emphasizing with little half circles there. And just strengthening up my lines, adding some stalks, some grass, and yeah. And right there, what I'm doing is I'm kind of fixing that because I thought, I thought right here that um, this line, it looked too much like just one smooth line. Like remember how we talked about flow lines and that looks a little bit odd. It looks kind of like it's all one mushroom. So I'm just going to separate those two lines a little bit to make it uh, look like they are two different mushrooms. So it was a little, really little subtle thing I did there, um, but it does help to separate the two. And uh, again, doing a little cast shadows under uh, some of those white spots. And a little bit of the cracks in the older stem there. Now this last one, strengthening that cap, strengthening the front edge of the cap. And I'm just going to lighten up that line of the top of the stalk because it just looks a little bit odd. But I'm going to strengthen those gills because, like I said, we really can see into those gills deeper because we're looking straight at them. Now looking at the stalk and the, and the bottom of the stalk and kind of the dirt. This would be really fun to finish in color. I'd love to have you email me your drawings, especially if you finish them up in uh, colored pencils or watercolor. Now, lastly, I'm just going to add a little bit more very light lines for those gills that you can see. Rebecca K said this was fun. Good. I'm glad you liked it. Well, that's it for our drawing demonstration. I hope you really enjoyed this workshop and perhaps you'll spend a few more minutes on your drawings.
Now, if you'd like to practice some more, I suggest you refer to the second page of the two page handout and you'll see a lot more beautiful photographs of these Amanita muscaria poison toadstools to practice drawing. Well, take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.